Hello everyone and welcome to the webinar about Reinforced Concrete in version 16. My name is Erka and I work as customer service engineer for four years at SIA. Today I'm going to talk about the new functions in new concrete. It's a transparent design and it's easy to check the calculation. This webinar is being recorded so you can take a look at it afterwards at our website. Here you can see a brief overview of the new concrete design for 1D elements. It is possible to change the settings for design, the setting of the effective length, the evaluation of slenderness for concrete columns, the calculation of requirement reinforcement and afterwards input of real reinforcement and do verifications occurring ULS and SLS. I start in this PowerPoint presentation, but I will also show you some things in SIA Engineer. So it is not completely shown in only a PowerPoint presentation. At this moment, what is included in version 16? We have the design according to Eurocode. There is the design of 1D elements, like beams, columns, ribs. We have checks, ULS checks like the interaction diagram, stresses, strains, shear and torsion, and SLS like stress limitation, crack control and deflections. At this moment we can do a design of bars and the design is, co is according to the Eurocode with the national annexes. We support also common cross-sections, so it, uh, it's not only rectangle cross-sections. And there is an interaction of all internal forces. The design happens very fast, so we have a high performance, and it's verifiable and structured output with references to the Eurocode and formulas used. There is a new structured menu so here you can see the menu tree in the concrete service. You will see a nice order of design from top to bottom. So in purple you can see the global and the member settings. Next you can do the reinforcement design. Third step is the input of real reinforcement. And at the end you can do the checks. There are some new global settings and they're all available now in one window. You can sort them in different kind of structures. So this one is shown by standard chapters following the UL code. You can do it by components. It's also possible to use a filter to find very easy the words you're looking for or values. Here you can find a different kind of sorting settings so you can just find a word or a value, change the view change the levels from standard to advanced or go back to default settings. And at last it's also possible to just show the changed values in this window. As I said, the settings can be switched between a standard view and a more advanced view. In the filter row you can search for text in the settings. So this is how the window looks like in C Engineer. We have also a new window for the 1D member data and this overrides the global settings so it means it has, a, it has a higher priority. So all of the elements in your structure listen to the global settings but you can override some beams or columns with these 1D member data. It's also easily to copy them as attributes to other elements like beams, columns, ribs. Now I'm also going to show you these settings in CIA Engineer. So I'm going to my example and this example shows in very different kind of elements in it. So we have beams, columns and also for example we have different kind of columns. So we have rectangle columns, circle columns, uh, oval columns. So we have all different kind of elements here in this exercise. So when I go to Concrete 15 and I go to the first option, the Concrete Setting Structure, these are the global settings you can find. 
All the settings are in this window, but you can put another level. So you have a level standard or more advanced level. When you would click on an option, it's also possible to click here and then you see a little bit more information with images and text so you know what the option exactly does. Then it's easy to find also a word, for example, I want something for reduction and there you can find it also. Also easy to change the view, so for example to go to code chapters following Eurocode or via concrete comments like it is standard. You can also when you have chosen some view save it as a user view and it's also possible here to show only changed items so it means the items which are here they are changed values. When I click here you can only see those appearing in this window so it's easy for a user to see what is changed in this project. Afterwards, when you would have changed something, but you would rather go to default settings, then you can just click on this option. Okay. Then I go to my setting per member, and here I have the 1D member data. When I double click here, I can select a 1D member, for example, this one, and then the 1D member data opens. So here it got more or less the same setting as previously, but here you can override some of them. For example, the diameter which is used here is default diameter 16, but here I could change it to, for example, 20. Now in the design of reinforcement, diameter 20 is used for this column instead of diameter 16. Okay. I press escape and I go out of the window of the member data. Uh, also I want for another column the diameter 20 so I could easily select it, right mouse click and I can select here to copy this attribute to another column. So I select copy and I select for example this column I press escape and this one get also the label with the same settings as I said before in the member data. So it's important that you know how the settings exactly work. Now I'll go back to my PowerPoint presentation. Here you can see the workflow for small structures. So you just begin with the settings. So do some global settings, do uh, some 1D concrete data to override things. Then you can do the design, the reinforcement which is required and afterwards you can do some output of images and calculation. When you take a look at the workflow for larger structures the design, only design is not enough. So you can see the first step is also doing some settings next doing the design. Uh, then we can input real reinforcement so the input of viewers of reinforcement and then we can do a check or single check. When we will see that the check doesn't satisfy, we can input some more user reinforcement and we can do again the check. And afterwards, when it's okay, we can do also do an output of graphics, an output of the single check, check, and the calculation. Before we can determine the reinforcement for columns, the buckling length must be defined properly because a wrong buckling length is a common cause when you get another column reinforcement then you estimate it. Now the buckling lengths uh, you can determine them as follows so it can automatically be de determined in CI Engineer based on rigidities. You can manually input them or you can do some stability calculation. Here you can see what CI Engineer does in the background when he would automatically calculate the buckling length. So he will input some load cases on the background so we do not see them. And he's going to calculate it. Now, dependent if it is a column or a beam, he's going to use other loads on it. 
and how to estimate what is a beam or a column here you can see it on this image so when you have a vertical element it is a column or less than 10 degrees from the vertical is also as a column and otherwise it takes this into account as a beam After everything is loaded, you get uh, something like this, so you have some rotation in the nodes, moments in the nodes. We know the rigidities of the nodes and we know the rigidity of the beams. So afterwards you can calculate uh, the buckling factor. And the buckling factor is calculated with these formulas. Now, the formulas are different when you have a sway structure or a non-sway structure. So, here you can see the difference. And as a user, you have to define if the structure is sway or non-sway. When is a node retained now in C Engineer? Well, the structure must be connected. So, you really have to connect all the member nodes. So, you can also see it in this image. Here in the middle, you can see um, the column, the node here, is supported because he recognizes there is a beam connected in that node, otherwise he would not recognize it. Also, you can see when you have a beam, it can contain multiple nodes in it. Uh, also in here, it can contain mul multiple nodes in it, and he can recognize it as it is supported when you have a beam in there. He recognizes also when the beam is connected less than 45 degrees so you can see he recognizes to give a system length when it is more he doesn't recognize it automatically but you would you could also set it manually now where can you find those settings where you can change the sway or non-sway settings it's also in the global settings so there you can find those settings and here you can say around axis y or axis z if the structure is sway or non-sway and then those formulas which i've shown are used in the background of course when the structure is sway you will get a buckling factor which is bigger than one it is also possible to override these properties per member, so when you would select a column, you can go to the buckling and relative lengths in the properties window, and there you could edit these, and there you could change also if the structure is sway, non-sway, or it's also possible, here you can see this at the first step, the base settings, here you can see if the structure is sway, non-sway, and here you could change it per member, or in the second tab you have the buckling data. Here you could also change if the node is supported or not to find the system length. Now I'm going to show this in CN Engineer. So first I'm going to show the global settings here. I'm going to find the settings, way for example. Here you can see sway around y axis, sway around z axis. You can see they're both on yes. So they're both seen as a sway. Okay. Now you can see in the structure, we're going to take a look at this column, for example. You will see that this one is braced. So you can see around this axis, it is non-sway. So the global setting is not okay for this column. The local axis of the beam, so around the strong axis, it is non-sway, we will change it. So when I select the beam, I go here to buckling and relative lengths. I press on the three dots. And I go into the buckling data. And here you can see this window. Um, here you recognize I'm around the strong axis. He recognizes this beam. You can see this obviously by this triangle here. And at the other side, when we take a look around the z-axis, you do not see a beam here, so he doesn't recognize it in here, in this window. Now I'm going to edit the setting, and here you can see my setting for sway is referred to the global settings. Now here you can override them for this member, and here, here I can say no instead of yes, and here I can put it to yes, so it's the same as the global settings, but here this one is now overwritten, so he listens to this setting. 
Also, the buckling factor is calculated in this case, and in the second tab of buckling data, here you could uncheck also this option if it was not taken into account for calculating the system length. Okay, close. Um, when you would not take this into account in the system length, you could also uh, change the graphical input of system length. When I click here, you can see it graphically, also with triangles. And there you could also input it. So when I just do it like this, it's a little bit more visually. And here you could also change it by a triangle, so clicking on it. So that's also a possibility. It's a more graphical method, but it's in the same system. So it's the same name. So it's dependent on each other. Now you can see that this system is chosen for only this beam. But for example, I want also the same for that column here. So, I'm also going to select this column and I'm going to change it in the same buckling system and it now has the same setting as the other column. Then I go back to my PowerPoint presentation and I go to the check of slenderness, second order theory. So the absolute maximum slenderness leads to an automatic determination of second order moments by nominal curvature methods. So it means when your slenderness is bigger than the limit slenderness, as it is shown here in the image, it would mean that you would have to calculate with the second order theory. In the concrete menu, this is done automatically uh, by the nominal curvature method. Now I'm going to show you in C Engineer. For example, when I select this column, I'm going to check slenderness. You can find it here in Reinforcement, Design, and Slenderness. Refresh. Uh, you see now the buckling factor, but when I open the preview, you can also see the slenderness. So, here you can see the system length, which is, calc which is, uh, which he knows for each direction. The buckling coefficient, which is calculated, and then you get the buckling length. Here you have the slenderness, and this one is smaller than the limit slenderness. So it means that it is not necessary to take the second order effects into account. Okay. Now I'm going to do it for this column, where I'd also change my settings. So I'm open the preview, and here you could see, for example, I changed my sway and non-sway for direction y and direction z, and here you can see a difference in the buckling factor, which is calculated automatically. So remember, around the axis y. There was a triangle in the middle, so the system length is half of the total length. So you can see here for around to the axis Z, it was a total length. So here you can see obviously the difference. And here you can see around this axis, we said that the structure was non-sway. So we get a buckling factor which is smaller than one. Here we said the, the structure was sway. So here we get a buckling factor bigger than one. And then you get the system length. When I take, for example, again this column, okay, here you have an example when you have a slenderness bigger than the limit slenderness, and here you have to take into account the second order effect. So CA Engineer does it automatically also in the background with the nominal cover to method. Then I'll go back to my PowerPoint presentation. Here you can see an image of the design of reinforcement. And it is possible to change the units for it. So in this case, you can see it's in square meters. But you can change it as a user. And afterwards, you could save it. So it's also changed for each project. And uh, it will use those settings. Here you have a representation of the required reinforcement. 
The reinforcement is displayed per side of the cross section. And as you can see here in this image, the corner bars are taken into account the half to both sides. As we do the reinforcement design and we ask for the required reinforcement, you get an image like here. You get a certain value, so it's a required reinforcement. But you could also ask some provided reinforcements, as you can also see in that table. Now I'm going to explain you that in the next slide. Now for the required reinforcement, you will also get a table of area per combination and you will also see the cross-section with the required area. Now when going further with the provided reinforcement, it means that the value of the required reinforcement is recalculated to a diameter. So it's based on a table where you get number of bars, the diameters, and remember in our example we have set for our column that we have to use diameter 20. So it takes a look in this table and afterwards you're going to see how much number of bars it needs to fulfill the required reinforcement. Now I'm going to show this in CI Engineer. I'm just going to take uh, another view. I'm going to take these bars, for example, only make them visible. Oh. oh, like this. Then I'm going to do the reinforcement design and to do it for all of them. And I ask for the as required and just going to uncheck the rendering. And here you can see a reinforcement design for all members. You can also see that we have displayed the units. So it's this option here. And you can see that units are now in square centimeters. Now you can change it via setup. Go to units. Then I can go to concrete. The reinforcement length. And here you can see the units for this one, so it's in centimeters, but you could change it to millimeters, for example. And afterwards, you can save it as your user setting, and it remembers it for your next project. Okay, going to do the reinforcement design again. Display it. Afterwards, I'm going to insert this image into my engineering report. So I can just click with the right mouse button and I click live picture into engineer report. I want to insert it directly and close it. So just want to pick this. So I keep the default settings. So and now the image is inserted directly in my engineer report. Then I'm going to select one column, for example, this one. Type of selection current. And I'm going to, to design only for the that column. So here I can ask the AS required and then afterwards you can also ask the AS provided so it means that it's recalculated in diameters and in this case it was a diameter 20 which we had chosen. So here you can see uh, in the provided values. Now you can also see this more explained in the preview. Mm -hmm. And here the provided values are exactly the number of bars which are shown here. Also you can see there is a design in all directions. So you have set plus, set minus, y plus, y minus. So it is taken into account in all directions which is also shown here in this image. I'm going to also take a look at the detailed output. So this is only brief output. Now I choose detailed, refresh. And then you have a nice detailed output. And here you can see also that the cross section is designed in all sides. Uh -oh. 
also here. And here also with the provided ones where it is exploded into bars. I can also export the table into the engineer report. So going to export table to engineer report, I insert and close it. And then afterwards I can also open the engineer report and take a look at my output. So it's automatically done in report one. I do it in the English language and regenerate it all. Here you can see the image which we, which we have sent to the engineer port and afterwards also the nice output, the detailed output, which you can now export to PDF or print it out. Then I go back to my PowerPoint presentation. As a third step, you could do an input of reinforcement. So we call it practical reinforcement, user reinforcement. And you can input it by, by those icons you can find under the command line. So I'm also going to show you in CI Engineer. So here you can find those icons. So those are exactly the same as here, reinforcement, input, edit. Here you can also find those icons. Now what do they mean? You can just add some reinforcement on the whole length of the beam or you could add only some longitudinal reinforcement to the beam or to a part of the beam. So you can decide as a user where you want to add some extra reinforcement. I'm first going to insert some reinforcement on the whole length of the beam. So I take this option and I select for example this member. First there opens a window with some predefined templates and those templates you can edit them, you can make a copy of them. Um, so I'm going to for example here copy the first template so it's here added in the list and I call it example voila. and now I'm going to edit this one so I click here on edit and I'm now in the window where I can change the longitudinal reinforcement so those are two layers with some uh, properties and here in the property window you can see it is diameter 16 because it was taken from the global settings. But I'm going to first change it to diameter 20 for both layers. It's also possible to change the number of bars. For example, I want here 5 bars. And at the bottom, I also want 5 bars. So it's very easy to change the layout of the reinforcement. Now we have only two layers on the top and the bottom, but when you want to add more layers, you can define here the new reinforcement parameters. For example, when I select this side, I want to add a number of bars, for example, four, but also a diameter 20. I just click now new layer and a new layer is added with those properties. I can do the same for the other side when I select it. Here I want, for example, three bars of diameter 20, new layer, and also they are added here on this side. What you could also do is add a layer, and normally the option is between existing bars, but I can also change and move the layer so it's a little bit more above the other bars. So for example, I want to add two bars of diameter 20, new layer. And now they're also added, but they're taken here in the middle. I want to, don't want to have that. So I pick here, uniform, 
and they're taken at the sides. Then I click OK. So I've changed my template, OK. And now you have a window where you can say where do we have to take the parameters of reinforcement. So for example the diameters, where do we have to take it from, from the concrete member data or from the defined template. Now I'm going to pick the defined template because I'm sure I shows there diameter 20 and it's not referring back to a diameter 16 for example. Okay. And now the reinforcement is added nicely in the column. Now I can make the reinforcement also a little bit nicer because now there are only small lines. Now I'm going to change the view parameters. So with the right mouse click I can go to set view parameters for all. I go to the tab of concrete and instead of a thin line I choose here 3D and I also check for example rounded bands. And when I click on OK you'll see here a nice reinforcement configuration with the real diameter of bars. Then I go back to the PowerPoint. Step 4. Afterwards, when you have the practical reinforcement, you can also do some checks. So here you can see a nice output of the check. I'm going to show this one also in C Engineer. So here you have reinforcement checks and I'm going to do, for example, capacity diagram check. Now I'm going to select the member, so I can pick a type of selection as a current. I do not check it for a load case, but for my combination ULS. And I'm going to click refresh. Here you can see a nice unity check of lesser, which is less than one, so it's okay. Uh, we can also take a look at the output. I can take, for example, a standard output and open the preview. So here you can see nicely the reinforcement configuration with an output, the summary of check, with a unit check uh, less than one, so it's okay. When the check would not be satisfied, you can add some extra reinforcement. Okay, now I'm going to back to my PowerPoint presentation. Next, the section check is something completely new. It's a new tool which is an integrated solution for the check of any cross section. The internal forces are automatically determined by calculation. It does a check ULS as well as according to Eurocode. The reinforcement of the model or input in the section check, and you can export the calculation directly to the engineer report. So you can see the window of the section check. Um, at the left, there are two tabs where you can see the basic or the additional reinforcement. And there you could also input reinforcement or correct reinforcement. You can change the diameters, for example. Uh, in the middle you can see a preview and there you could also change it to a standard or detailed output. And at the right there you can see a window of checks. So there you can see uh, the check which is okay or not. And also the check value which is directly okay or not. At the top you can export it directly to the engineer report. Here you can see the procedure, so here you can see the section check in three steps. So at the bottom, the actions, the button, you can see the button of section check. Afterwards, you can select a section of the beam. It will perform the check. It will open a window with the detailed output. And then afterwards, you can send your output into the engineering report. Now I'm going to show you also the section check in CN Engineer. And I'm also taking again this beam. So we had this uh, check of the capacity diagram and here you can find the option to open the section check. 
So when I click on this one, you can see here in the comment line, they're asking select a member for single check. So I select this member and afterwards, I don't know if you can see it very well in this case, you can see some green crosses where you can select the section. Now obviously I'm going to select the section which has the highest value here. So I'm going to select this section at the top. Now the section check is opening. And here you can see a nice output with the checks. Yeah. Here you can see the reinforcement we had added. And here you can also see when I click on it, for example, I could also change it. For example, the diameter 30 is changed directly and it's also changed in here. I could also change it into a detailed output. Well, you can find it directly into here. Now I'm going to back to a standard output. And also this output, I want to export it to my engineering report. So I click here on export. And I close this window. Uh, insert and close. And when I open back again, my engineering report. You can see here the check of the capacity interaction diagram and also edit with the pictures. So here you have also a very nice output. Then I go back to the presentation. We have some features of the new design, so you have some detailed illustration of the design standard. So here's an example of detailed provisions with also references to formulas and articles of the Eurocode. We have seen that the reinforcement is visible in all directions. This is also a nice feature when you would ask the table results. When you would double click on a value, it will automatically open the single check. So when I go to see an engineer, I'm going to show you this also. Here you have beneath actions also a button table results. So when I click on it, it will open the results like this. And this one, you can copy it directly into Excel for example. So it's nicely when you would select a table like this and just copy it directly into Excel. And now when I click for example, double click on this value, you will see it opens directly the section check. So it's also a nice feature. So you can see again the reinforcement for all directions. So there's really a strength also in the output. You can see the cross section with all the sides reinforcement. There has also been an increase in speed. Here you can see uh, the example project with uh, yeah, a number of members, nodes, loads and a table with the difference between the new concrete and old concrete which is now much faster than the old solution was. Afterwards, uh, the shifting of the moment line is also taken into account in this new concrete. So it's taken into account following this article uh, and you can find it also in the global settings. Next, you have also in the global settings the moment reduction. So it takes into account the width of your support or your column. And afterwards, it will do a moment reduction. The same is for the shear force reduction. So also um, above the supports or columns, it will do a reduction in shear force. This I'm going to also show it in CIA Engineer. Going to take, for example, this beam. And I'm also going to show 
the global settings for it. Um, here you can see the shear force reduction above support, so it is taken into account in this case. You can also see the images, the moment reduction above supports, which is also taken into account. And here you have the shift rule, which is also taken into account. Now for the moment reduction you will see that it also takes into account as well the columns as the supports. Now which width is taken into account when you have the support? I'm going to show you in this example. When I have for example a support, you will see here default size. And that size is taken into account for the moment reduction in this case. Going to check it in the reinforcement design when I select here this member. Uh, no, for example, here in internal forces and select a member. I can take a look, for example, at uh, the moment just from the internal forces. Like this. Uh, here is not, not a shifting rule. This is not taken into account in this one. Also, the reduction is not taken into account. It's in here, the MED value. Here you can see the reduction. When you would want to see it together, you can take this one. And now both results are displayed. This one is drawing plane 3D, but when I set it to screen, for example, you can see it beneath each other. The same is for uh, the shear force. The ED value. It's a little less, not much. So you can see also not much difference, but here you can see also there is a reduction of the shear force. So we have design also of general cross-sections. You can see it here, for example, a different kind of cross-sections, which is now possible. So it's not only for rectangle cross-sections. Uh, we have also an example in this case, in our example here. Here you could see we have some oval columns, for example. There we can select it and do the reinforcement design for it, current combination. When I do refresh, you can see it also does reinforcement design in all directions. So you can see it obviously. And when I open the preview, it really takes into account um, yeah, each cross-section also on the side is the reinforcement layout. So we have a really transparent output. Um, you can see it uh, here in the detailed output. You can see the images directly into it, all the formulas. So it's really transparent output. Uh, you can check the calculations. Uh, with the formulas, so it's not a black box anymore. Um, it's a really nice feature. Then, what about the future of the concrete design? Well, here you have, um, it will take into account user reinforcement, basic reinforcement and additional, so it will be possible in the future to also take a look at only additional reinforcement. Uh, design ULS plus SLS. Uh, the strip method will be implemented for plates. Then conditions to the deformations plus punching. And the automatic dimensioning and design groups. And also, of course, the design of 2D members. At this moment, it's a beta program for testing. So as a beta tester, you can already could use it. But now it's... Uh, not officially released, not yet. Then we have a small summary about the new concrete. So it's a very practical module 
it's checkable by the very nice output. Um, it's also safe because you can see really everything what is calculated. It's also economical by the reductions which are done and it includes the interaction of all possible internal forces. And of course, the last but not least, it is a very fast solution, so we get really fast the results. So that was the summary. I want to thank you all for your attention. And um, as said before, the webinar is recorded, so you can take a look at it afterwards at our website on our YouTube channel.